dude, fucking great start. Hello, everybody, and welcome into the pre-show for EIF's 8th Annual Ultimate Destiny pay-per-view event. I know football is just culminating in New England between the Patriots and Jaguars, and the Eagles will look to fly, Eagles fly, but tonight, superstars look to soar to the skies and achieve their dreams. One special superstar tonight is going to get the opportunity to walk in and walk out of the 2018 EIF Royal Rumble as the victor being guaranteed a spot in one of the two EIF World Championship main events at WrestleMania 11 this March. Thanks for tuning in to the EIF Ultimate Destiny pre-show. Your host, as always, EIF owner Carney. We haven't done pre-shows in quite a while, but we're back with one here tonight. We're actually going to have one for this pay-per-view and Fear is Reality, and we're hoping to have one for WrestleMania. WrestleMania, just an, an all-day event, though, 12 to 12, uh, and, and so much going on there. And, of course, now we've got four hours for this. We'll have four hours for Fear is Reality, our next pay-per-view in three weeks from tonight. And, yes, it's Sunday night EIF pay-per-view action a bit different than what we've had before EIF historically the Saturday night pay-per-views we had a couple of Friday night ones later in 2017 well now we're going over to Sunday kicking off your week with pay-per-view action for EIF it, it almost feels more WWE style to do something like that and don't forget guys we do have shows this week Superstardom ED Hellocity they're all coming your way I'll have more on that in just a little bit actually not just a little bit but it's going to happen you're going to get that announcement later on during our pay-per-view broadcast so this is the pre-show what that means there's going to be a couple of different things than what you'd see on the regular show uh, but we do still have two very cool matchups for you here on this pre-show and just so you know the pre-show is not going to have entrances we're going to have in-ring introductions but the pay-per-view event itself once we hit that live ppv time at 7 p.m that is and 7 p.m eastern i should say that is when you're going to get the entrances we plan on having entrances for all of our matches five scheduled matches on the main card tonight overall four championships three on the main card but here right here on the pre-show you're going to get a treat we've got the helicity championship on the line k hart since claiming Neville after having Grand Metalik. Now he's Neville and he's doing terrific with him and terrific as the Hellocity champion. He had to fight in a non-title battle royale just a week or so ago and he did pretty well in it. Convicted and K-Hart were in the final two and Convicted didn't look too bad either. And so through that, Convicted gets rewarded. It's going to be his first one-on-one -on -one opportunity at the EIF Hellocity Championship. Convicted rejoined EIF and became a member of Hellocity just around the time that Jumper took over as the GM. So this may be a long time coming for that Hellocity Superstar who gets his first crack in a one-on-one -on -one action for that gold. It's going to be Superstar, and by the way, both our matches on the pre-show coming your way via Superstar, and then we've got three of the five main card matches booked under the ED brand. Convicted is Jason Jordan, K Hart is Neville, and uh, that's going to be a pretty exciting match. That's a little later to come here in the pre-show. We're also going to hear from a couple of guys tonight because the big story—it's the Royal Rumble. It's it's five superstars entering in. One superstar is going to stay. It's over the top rope, and whoever can survive that is the Royal Rumble winner. And we have two superstars who have won the Rumble before that are in tonight's elite competition. They've also been a part of some WrestleMania main events, and they've had some terrific careers. They are Hall of Famers, Tripod and Deathlock. Tripod inducted in 2016, Deathlock inducted just a year ago and the hall of fame is relevant tonight also later on in our pay-per-view broadcast we will announce and confirm the first eif superstar to be inducted into the 2018 class hall of fame That's coming up later on tonight. Sorry about that little delay there. So anyway, that's coming up on the pay-per-view on the main card. At some point, we are going to announce EIF's first 
Hall of Fame inductee for this year's 2018 class and the Hall of Fame induction ceremony annually held the night before EIF WrestleMania. I tell you what, guys, it, it's such a special night. And for those that don't know all of the Hall of Fame names that go in every year and there and there is some unfamiliarity with one superstar to the next, what whatever you have. It, you know, it's a great time to kick back and to hear some stories. And this league, being that we've been all around now for nearly 11 years, it, it, we're actually less than a month away from 11 years, but being that there's so many stories in this league that go untold or they're not told as often. And I find that a lot of even the newer talent, they just love to be a part of that. Love to hear that. We're going to have all sorts of WrestleMania deals coming up for you guys too. Mainly our EIF superstars, but you, the fans getting an opportunity to participate as well. And we thank both the superstars and fans so much because sometimes our superstars are the biggest fans in EIF. And we've also got some guys that just watch the league and, and that's terrific too. Um, what else can we talk about here? We've got a couple of championship matches on the main card too. Uh, mentioning that Royal Rumble, we are going to chat a little bit with some EIF insiders here, and I'll be talking with a couple of guys in the party. James Arcoffel is doing the uh, entrances and the setup here tonight, as he has always been doing really the last month or so. Uh, and he's going to be helping me out there. So he'll queue up some audio for us and we'll have some guys in here that will be able to talk a little bit about what's going on in the league and giving some insight into what could be happening tonight. But speaking of tonight, we know you're here to watch some wrestling and I, I want to provide that certainly for you. So we have two superstar matches on the pre-show. The first well, actually not the first. The first uh, or later on is going to be our Hellocity Championship match. A great opportunity for you guys to see some of the best young up-and-coming talents. That's K. Harden convicted. But first, we actually get a veteran. Prof Jag is going to be competing tonight as Bray Wyatt and Prof is serious about wanting to come back and be a full-time guy. Prof wants to do it. Well, it's young versus old because Prof now kind of a veteran in EIF uh, on and off granite, but he's going one-on-one -on -one with a superstar making just his second, maybe third appearance. I believe just his second. And uh, it was, it was a, a tough first one. Certainly swag boy is showing up after having a house show match with NBC master, but he'll get an opportunity tonight to go one-on-one -on -one with Prof Jag. It is our opening match here on the pre-show and it is Bray Wyatt and Baron Corbin. So let's go ahead and get that match set up for you here. And you guys be able to catch some cool action. And so even though it's a pre-show, it doesn't count as an actual uh, pay-per-view match, but you will see it on the pre-show results and the match is up. So go ahead and look for it, guys. Again, we'll have in-ring introductions for these superstars. They're not gonna have entrances on their way to the ring. Uh, we'll just have them pop up there. James will be watching, Prof is already in. Swag Boy, this is for you too. But a good opportunity to get some exposure of your swag boy, why not, right? And hey, I'll tell you what, people say what they want about being on the pre-show. Some people laugh about it when guys get booked on here. You know, two guys, pretty noteworthy guys in EIF now, just saying, but it wasn't this case well over a year ago. Their first, if you want to call it a pay-per-view match, it was a pre-show match on Superstars Reborn. It was a one-on-one. -on -one. It was just a, it was a, a throw together match. It was, we've got to get something going. So let's just do this. A little one-on-one, -on -one, a couple of guys by the name of Headshot Killer and Nexus Genesis ended up having that one-on-one -on, -one on the pre-show. And uh, well, all they've done since then is Headshot's had a couple of main event opportunities and Nexus is a world champion on ED now defending tonight in our main event. He'll be going up against Greedy and Greedy, EIF World Championship, he gets an opportunity at Nexus once more and falls count anywhere, extreme rules action. Swagboy says his mic isn't working, so I invited him to the game. Hopefully that'll help him be steered towards our direction. By the way, guys, don't forget you're watching and can watch on either or both Mixer and Twitch. And there's various pros and cons. Thank God. Mm -hmm. 
By the way, guys, don't forget, like I said, you can watch this on Mixer or Twitch. Now, if you watch on Twitch, you're going to get some benefits. First off, for our main card, when we have entrances, you're not going to be able to hear the entrance music if you're watching on Mixer. That's a Twitch exclusive, as is our one-on-one -on -one finisher count and ring escape count. Uh, James Arcoffel does a terrific job with graphics. You also get a little background page instead of just watching a, a spinning menu of nothingness. Uh, so there, there's a little bit more filtering done, a little bit more graphic and some design put together by James Arcoffel and the terrific job he does. He'll be with me throughout the night. We're scheduled to end at 10 p.m. Eastern, but we'll go with you until we are out of matches. But we're about ready to ring the first one of the night. Pre-show action here. And the following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first in the top left corner. James, please uh, escort yourself over to that side. There you go, big man. Introducing first in the top left corner, representing Baron Corbin, he is Swagboy. And his opponent, standing in the bottom right, representing Bray Wyatt from Buffalo, New York. This is Prof Jed. All right, Prof, back up a little bit. Hope you can hear me. Yeah, you can. All right. So Bray Wyatt, Baron Corbin, Prof Jag, and Swag Boy first match here on the pre-show. And let's get things going. Ding, ding, ding. All right, so Prof Jag starting out to a good set here. Swagboy had the displeasure of debuting in EIF just this past Wednesday. House show action, he went one-on-one -on -one with NBC master Baron Corbin versus Brock Lesnar. And yes, he was given a tour through Suplex City like no other. First class and not a round trip, just a one-way ticket. And oh, Prof gets mid-moved here. Swagboy out of reversals, but he mid-moved him. So this is, uh, he, he doesn't know what mid-move is, does he? <laughs> He's just standing around. Uh, yeah, and he's taking a long move. Well, this mid move is going to be just about nothing. He gets one move out of it. So, well, swag. Oh, well, thanks for telling me. So, anyway, swag boy takes the punch. Oh, it's a young. Well, he said young versus old. Swag boy. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, swag boy has no clue what he's doing right now. You never know what you're going to see on the pre-show. We wanted to make sure Prof got an opponent. Swag Boy is... I don't know if he just doesn't know how to play the game or what. Yeah, well, Prof take advantage of it. Why not? Prof knows, hey, Prof knows how this league works. Doesn't matter. Take advantage of the guy. And for Prof, you know, you want to make a comeback in the EIF. This is how you do it. You know, you get some solid little wins here and there. Prof is a former Super Showman champion. He's widely been considered a superstar guy throughout his career. By the way, you guys can see, and I know we don't have entrances on for the pre-show matches, but you can see the Royal Rumble ring posts. That is the arena for tonight. Justifiably so, it's the host for Ultimate Destiny. We will have the Royal Rumble as our main event here tonight. NBC, if you didn't already know, no, uh, I already know about the last game, but no Eagles spoilers in this party. Swag Swagboy. Well, Swagboy's reserving some reversals right now, so that's smart. He's taking his time. Oh, nice headbutt from Prof. Prof Jag just trying to get things going here. Back in his career. Oh, he gets reversed. Swagboy did not get green barred by NBC, right? Or he did. He did. I, I don't think he is. I, I don't think split screens happen like that. I... Well, here's the thing. He doesn't listen. Listen. He doesn't listen. His mic, his batteries are low. He wasn't ready for it. You know, I can't. I can't do anything. You know, I, I genuinely can't. Um, 
That's, if, if you, you know, this is why I tell people you need a mic in the IM. Now, he does have a mic, it's just he's not, for whatever reason, he's not talking to not today, but, you know, you need a mic in this league. It's very, very difficult to be successful. Oh, well. Too bad, so sorry. Anyway, Rob Jag, we mentioned uh, in action now, but he had a terrific match at the house show against Master B. Ended up coming up short, but you know to do so good uh, against Mr. Money in the Bank, you know that's that's something you got to commend. Uh, here comes the wake up taunt. This could be the end. There's a green bar. Yeah, Swagboy did get green barred by NBC, so this is not exactly the way you want to debut an EIF. Back to back green bars. Wait, maybe not. No, he's not going to get green barred by Crom. I, here's my guess, Jumper. I think he's got battery issues and maybe his batteries keep dying. I asked him, I said, do you want to do an match? He said, yeah. So maybe that's what's happening. Because, dude, how many times do we split? You, you don't really split in this game. You just don't connect. Well, off the rope, Swagboy coming and he gets clothesline down. Groff with a full bar of yellow. And they play bumper cars. Yep, probably. I would not be surprised. So, well, somewhat of a disheartening way to start out a pre-show. And, and it's a pre-show, granted, but, you know, that's tough. I, I don't think that was unintentional, too, if I had to guess. And Jolton said, damn, he's pulling a Jolton on his debut. Jolton, I was inviting you in the party because I wanted you to be the one to fight Prof, so thanks. Well, Swag Boy, I didn't know that that age factor. Uh, Prof, just go ahead and fight him, man. Prof, if you're in here, fight that come. Yeah, I know that. I'm aware of that, but uh, I, I mean, he just needs to know, it, like, I, I don't know if he, you know, I asked him, I said, you have low battery issues, you sure you want to play? He has to understand that if you, you know, you can't, you can't quit a match if you're doing that bad. I hope he knows that. And I could be wrong, but he's still in the party and he's not in the game. So I'm thinking he did it on purpose. Well, you're the only one that does it. Two, and that's going to do it. Rob Jag gets the win. I'm counting it as a win. I don't give a fuck. I, you know, when you don't have a mic, I don't get clarification. I, I'm sorry. Rob Jag's going to get the win here, and kudos to him for that. Rob making a dominant statement here on the pre-show. You know, at one point, he was main eventing pay-per-views, and it's been a long time since then, but Rob wants to make it a short climb back to that moment, and... A good way to start out here, a tough luck for Swag Boy. Not a lot of swag when you're nine years old getting beat around the league, but it looks like that's not going to change. Prof Jag with a big win here on the pre-show to get things kicked off at Ultimate Destiny. All right, let's do, uh, okay, now uh, 622. We've got a little bit of time here before we get... Our next thing started, we're going to have the Helocity Championship match coming your way in, eh, let's just say, about 13 minutes. We'll do it at 6.35. So in the meantime, uh, James, I believe you do have the ability, if I'm correct, uh, to get the, um, what's it called, some of the mics up here? Yeah? Okay, let me see here. All right, well, let's see here. Let's get a couple of guys talking a little bit. Um, why not? Yeah, uh, hold on one second here. Broadcasting, and we're going to include the party audio right now. So, boom, there you go. Party audio is on. And you wait. Now, can anybody talk, or now I have to ask people to include their audio? All right. All right, cool. So why don't we do tripod? Why don't we do uh, you and Greedy? You guys are always the the great people to talk. Greedy, are you there? Good job. 
All right, never mind. Just, just uh, no, not you. Sorry, bud. No. Swag boy, <laughs> was that you that said I'm here? No, it's K Hart. Oh, okay. K Hart, I appreciate you being here, but we'll get you one in a little bit. All right. So I'm now on the stream. Right now. So, Tripod, are you on? I am on. All right, great. Well, Tripod gets welcomed in here, so we've got a few minutes, guys. Uh, but we've got, uh, yeah, we've got a few minutes here until our Hellocity Championship match. This is the Ultimate Destiny pre-show. Joining me now is EIF 2016 Hall of Famer Tripod and also 2015 Royal Rumble winner Tripod. So back-to-back, -back, pretty good years there. And then 2017, he won his first EIF World Championship on ED. But tonight, Tripod, New Year. Uh, I don't want to say New You because you've done that about 27 times in your career, which spans almost uh, seven whole years now. But either way, you're in the Royal Rumble tonight. How are you feeling going into the big match? Nervous, as always, but, you know, that's kind of with the territory of the big match, so. You've been in a lot of big matches in your career, and, you know, there's the, the countless world title matches, but, you know, the, the Royal Rumbles, um, some Money in the Banks, I believe, WrestleMania main events. You know, do you look back at a match, and, and does it? do you ever look back at some of those other matches and think, well, if I did well there, you know, I can handle myself in a high-pressure match like this? I mean, really looking back on it, um, I've grown from all the big matches I've been in since really WrestleMania 5 because that was like the first real big match I was in. It was World Heavyweight Champion going up against guys like Raymond, Icon, McDonough. I had made it up there to the top, and I knew I belonged there. So when I finally reached that, I just have seen growth and figured out how to play in those high-pressure situations. Yes, I might not be the one who wins most of the time, but at the same time, I know what it takes to go into almost any match at this point. After seven years, you kind of just learn, like, oh, if I'm going into a Royal Rumble, I have to do this. Oh, if I'm going into a triple threat world title match, I have to do this. It all is either based, you have to have the right composure for it, but you also have to have the right strategy for it, or you're going to sink. Raymond Icon McDonough, three names, all in the Hall of Fame. You are too. Tonight we announced the first Hall of Fame inductee for the 2018 class. Now you've been in so many matches. You're among, uh, you're up there with DZ among the match leaders in this league, and it looks like you're going to eventually hit 700 matches played here in 2018. Not tonight, but that's down the road. What about the Hall of Fame? Because it wasn't that long ago that you were inducted, a little under two years ago. How special is that in a career? I guess, you know, you certainly have the story one. So where does a, a moment like that rank in your career? Like, how special is that for somebody to be in the EIF Hall of Fame? Well, it's to me, it's pretty special because you have to look at the top moments, like, in my career. Royal Rumble's got to be up there. I mean, in WrestleMania, even though I haven't won, it's up there. Um, pretty Winning the Superstorm title, it's up there. But Hall of Fame is something special because when you're getting to have your little Hall of Fame speech, you get to tell your story. You get to tell everybody who's watching where you came from, what you've done to finally get to that point. And it's just such a special moment to, like, get to kind of show off in a way, but also, like, just have pride in what you've done over the years. And since my Hall of Fame... I've just continued to add on my legacy that is built in there. Well, chatting with EIF Superstar Tripod 2016 Hall of Famer Tripod right now on the Ultimate Destiny pre-show if you're just now tuning in. Tripod, you're competing in the Royal Rumble tonight, but aside from that, is there a match you're looking forward to most on tonight's card? Because I, I was saying this, and you can feel free to chime in here too. You know, I, I, I know we get away from some of the things and maybe we don't honestly assess EIF uh, maybe as much as it should be you know we've obviously hit some rough patches at times and when I think of Wrestlemania and you've been around now for so long so you've been a part of the build to several Wrestlemania some of them very very good events maybe some of the best in your career some of them may be the worst I, I mean you know mania is just it's it's so weird that it's like that and you wish it wasn't you wish they were all great but you know being blunt they're not but I've noticed consistently, it seems, no matter how good the WrestleMania is, it feels like the build-up to it is more talk. 
than matches and, and the match quality some people say you know it dips for a little bit once you hit january it, it really tends to dip you know i'm looking at at our start here in 2018 a pair of house shows already i think we've had some good matches and i'm also looking at on card you know ultimate destiny i think this is one of the stronger cards we've had in recent memory for an ultimate destiny pay-per-view so i want to know two things one do you agree with that or what's your take on build up towards wrestlemania's and two do you have another match uh, aside from the rumble that you're looking forward to most tonight? Well, in terms of the build up to WrestleMania, I think when it comes to match quality, it does somewhat tend to dip because it's due to the fact that you make one wrong move, you lose one wrong match, you're very well out of the world title picture if you're in the main event. And if and if you're kind of in a spot where you might not be on the card at all, you got to do what you got to do to win, whether it's count out, whether it's this, that, or the other. Whatever you got to do, you have to make sure you get on that card. But with it being 12 hours and the amount of people we have, most people will get on the card. But there are those few people who tend not to show up and not get a match on the card. Like, well, I think it also guy, matters where stick. you're on the card, though. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it, it, yeah, exactly. you want to be on the card, but do you really want to be – the third match of the day at, at 12.45 p.m. noon, and you're kind of in a, not a throwaway match, but, you know, you're in a for fun triple threat, and then that's it, and that's your WrestleMania moment? No, you don't want to be in that. And I'm one of the lucky people who actually has never had to be in a spot like that. The match that had the least, like, I guess you'd call it build in a sense, was me fighting at WrestleMania 6 for the extreme title, where I completely dominated in a 25-minute scramble. And I think that was that probably was the least hype. a pretty... That was actually not a bad match, if I remember correctly. It, it wasn't a bad match at all, especially for me, because I won the title 13 times in that match. But yeah, that's true. the point is... <laughs> the point is, like, if you, if you do it right, you're not going to be in that situation where you're going to be third match, and, that's gonna, and it's just a for fun triple threat. If you're here, you're dedicated... You're going to get those matches. Because I only not main event two WrestleManias. And the, one of the ones I did main event, it was a non-title match. I've only been in one non-title match. And that was against Greedy at WrestleMania 7 in a death match. Which we thought was the end of my career. But uh, we look back at it now. It was a little bit of a two-month suspension instead. Um, that was also supposed to be the last time me and Greedy fought. But that's besides the point. You just got to be here. You got to do what you got to do to win. Now, to your second question, am I excited for any other matches? Of course I am. I got two matches I'm really looking forward to. The Superstar on Tile match. We know Jumper and NBC are going to be in it. But we don't know who that mystery third person is. I'm, I'm not going to say what I've heard, but I've heard some rumors on who it is. And if it's the person I'm hearing, whew, NBC's in trouble. But I'm also looking forward to was am I hoping is the final showdown between Nexus and Greedy because these two they're both solidified in the world title picture but if Greedy went I mean if Greedy loses you really have to take into account if he's going if he's going we're getting poor we're getting poor satellite reception here in the EIF network studio but I, I will quickly say while we wait for Tribod to get back here that, you know, a lot of good things are, are still coming up. Uh, and Tribod talking about those two main events and, and definitely a lot of excitement building around there. Tribod, are you are you, you back with us? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can now. Yeah, we... we I okay, where, where did I cut off? Time. Sorry. Just to, uh, you, the last thing you just said was uh, Greedy and Nexus, potentially their final match. Oh, yeah. Greedy and Nexus, potentially their final match. Um... It really depends on what happens. If Greedy's able to pull off the victory, then you know Nexus is going to be coming back, hoping to win a fierce reality, and go on to main event his first WrestleMania. But now, if Greedy loses, is he really going? Where's he going to be on the road to WrestleMania? Is he going to continue to fight for the world title, fierce reality? Is he going to be out of the picture? We really don't know. This could be Greedy's last shot. Nexus could find a new challenger or challengers heading into WrestleMania. And who knows, whoever wins the Royal Rumble tonight, they could very well be facing either Nexus or Greedy for the world title at WrestleMania. Same thing for whoever wins the Superstar title match tonight. The Royal Rumble winner 
has to make sure they keep their eyes set on both those matches. And, well, me personally, I already know who I'm fighting at what time I'm going for WrestleMania when I win the Rumble tonight. When you win the Rumble. And I should note that, uh, just to correct you here, I believe Nexus was a part of the Superstar to main event last year. Um, so, was uh, yeah, I believe so. I think it uh, was what Nexus, ASP, NBC, uh, and Ratlund. And then, oh, uh, yeah, you, uh, you're correct. Greedy watched. So, but it would be his first on ED. Travel, we've got time for one more question here before we get to our Helocity Championship match to conclude the pre show between K Hart and Convicted coming up in just a couple of minutes. Quickly, though, Tripod. You're saying when you win the Rumble, and earlier you said, you know, I know what to do. I, you, know, you know what to do when you're in a triple threat. You know what to do when you're in uh, a ladder match or a world championship match or a WrestleMania match. You have proven in the past that you knew what to do to win a Royal Rumble and Ultimate Destiny, and you've been a part of a couple. You were, a final, you were in the final two back in the 2012 Royal Rumble as well. What do you need to do tonight to win? Well, really... Ooh, do I want to boil my strategy with uh, some of my opponents in here? I guess I could say it. You got to really I think look you at do. We both know you're going over the top first. You really have to look at endurance, and I mean, I, I, I know the funny thing is I'm fat, but you got to look at endurance. Look at when I won the Royal Rumble. How many people were eliminated not by me? One person. That was Legend Killer DDV. I eliminated everybody oh, yeah. else in that match. You gotta defend, you have to strike, you gotta win. And I'm winning tonight. I'm winning the whole damn thing, main eventing my fourth straight WrestleMania. And well, Greedy and Nexus, I'm watching you both very carefully tonight. All right, well, Tripod with his intentions clearly stated. Tripod 2016 Hall of Famer and going to be competing in tonight's main event, the EIF 2018 Royal Rumble. Tripod, a pleasure as always. Thanks for your time. Good luck tonight. All right, well, let's go ahead and get back down to ringside. We're going to disinclude the party audio. That was, again, EIF superstar and Hall of Famer Tripod, a former superstardom and world champion, and tonight he looks to be the second-ever two-time Royal Rumble winner, the only other superstar to do it, another Hall of Famer. Back in 2012, he was inducted, competed until 2014, won Raymond in one half of the Rockstar Revolution, occasionally pops in to watch some broadcasts. We might see him here tonight. Anyway, let's go ahead. The match is up. It is Hellocity Championship time. We already saw one Hellocity superstar compete. Swag Boy, boy, did he do terrific against Prof Jag. I'm joking. Nobody laughed. Come on, guys. It was awful. Anyway, let's hope this match is better. It is Neville. It is Jason Jordan. It is the Hellocity Championship match, and it's also our final contest here on the pre-show. This is only the second match on the pre-show, but guys, have no fear. Five matches still to come on the main card. We've got a lot of guys, and I'll be the first to say, a lot of guys who are here tonight not scheduled. I want to let all of you guys know I see you. I, I know that you're here. Uh, keep an eye peeled because there could be some technical issues. I certainly hope we do not have them. Them. But if we were to, uh, this would be your opportunity to capitalize. K Hart left the party, so right there is one of them, although this is not what I meant. Um, so let's go ahead. I'll start. Uh, let's see. We got convicted. I'll invite him to the game. K Hart, we're having some party issues too, so we can always fix that. Uh, both those guys have been invited. Now James Arcoffel's connecting. Of course, all the people that you don't want connecting. NBC's been connecting the whole time. But hopefully after the match, uh, we'll have the opportunity to go ahead and... It's here before we get into the main card, so uh, it should be really exciting. But we've got K-Hart and Convicted coming up here. Second match of the pre-show. It's our first of four championships to be defended tonight. And it's Convicted's first opportunity in a one-on-one -on -one for an EIF championship. He joined Hellocity just about five months ago almost. And one opportunity it is for him tonight to end the reign of K-Hart and King Neville. But that submission is so deadly, Convicted is going to have to be on his toes for that one. And we've got 
We've got a convicted fan in the Mixer chat. Don't forget to chat along with us throughout the night on Mixer. You can join the conversation on Twitch, too. It's twitch.tv slash EIF Network. And if you're on there and you want to get to Mixer and check out the live feed along with the live chat, uh, which I can see that one, go ahead and go to Mixer.com slash EIF underscore Network. We'll be streaming live on both of those platforms throughout the night. And we're going to have entrances actual... Uh, in on the way to the ring entrances uh, coming up on our main card, the portion of our main card tonight. So excited. I mean, seriously, everybody just wants to be a part of this event and uh, hoping to oblige to many of those. All right. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the EIF. Velocity Championship. Introducing first the challenger standing in the top left corner representing Jason Jordan. This is convicted. And his opponent across the ring in the bottom right, representing Neville. He is the reigning and defending EIF Velocity Champion, K Hart. All right, guys, championship match. Convicted, are you ready? K Hart, are you ready? Pretty much. All right, that works for me. Ding, ding, ding. And here we go. It's the Helasi Championship match. And oh, nice drop kick from Convicted. Oh, he smacked the mat. I think he was a little disappointed with himself that he didn't get more of it. Convicted trying to just rush out the gun and get a quick start here on the champion. Smart move because he knows submission's a factor. Belly to belly connects. And he wants to do the right thing. And that's just take it to K Hart immediately. This is smart. I, I like Convicted's opening 30 seconds here. And I know people are going to critique me and say that that's not enough to judge a match. But you really have to look at the little details. It's the meticulous things that can matter most. And here comes Convicted. And K Hart. Kart struggling. He's not reversing a thing against the challenger. We can see a title change hands right here on the pre-show. We might not even get to the main card before. And Jawbreaker connects for Kart. Now Kart coming back. A suplex connecting for the Hellocity champion. He goes for a stomp and convicted uses his first reversal to dodge that. He slides in underneath the bottom rope. Gets caught. Float over DDT for the champion. ED action, by the way. We had a pair of superstar matches, but ED kicking things off. On the main card, nice back kick, and oh, wait a minute. Convicted, get up to the top rope, and oh, what a drop kick. Hey, Hart with a beautiful drop kick from the top rope. And now it's the champion in control. Spinner on the back fist. Convicted stops him. Nice drop kick, but it's muted by Kay Hart. Kay Hart hit with a fireman's carry. And convicted, nice little drop kick there. Okay, they're going a little back and forth here. Stomp on the ribs, and the challenger back in the advantage. Ground up, gut wrench suplex. Velocity general manager, Jumper Magnum, watching along. He'll be competing later on this evening in the Superstardom Championship match. Thanks for tuning in here on a Sunday night pay-per-view, Ultimate Destiny, the pre-show right now. The pay-per-view coming at the top of the hour. It's going to be back-to-back -back gut wrench suplexes. For Convicted, the champion is struggling right now. Look at that, got to give credit to Convicted. Convicted was in one previous championship match. It was for the Hellocity title. A five-man battle royale, though, so arguably not a fair chance, but he gets his first one-on-one -on -one here tonight. That's a great opportunity, although he misses another mid-move, and he's going to use his first ring escape. Oh, no, his, uh, his one that he did earlier was a reversal. Yep, I'm positive. So. Yep, you're going to have to fix that out. By the way, if you're watching on Twitch, you get those uh, ring escape and finisher count meters that are really nice. Nice little graphic to just keep your mind on that. Nice little back and forth contest here. We have a lot of the main roster uh, tuning in too, which is great. They're giving some attention to the guys on Hellocity. Stop. Convicted gets away from it. Convicted off the rope. Okay, Hart, they play bumper cars, and look at that. A little back and forth there. I like it. Single leg take there. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, they watch. There's another off the rope. Driving one foot to the side of the head. They really are. You can tell the speed here. There's a lot of speed in this matchup. Nice neck breaker from K-Hart. It really feels so back and forth between these two. 
And now here comes the champion. Ground up, German suplex, beautiful by Kehar. Kehart uh, backing up a little bit. That's going to be a free move, Kehart. He gets one free move on you. You walked a little bit, actually quite a bit. So convicted, you get one free move. All right, uh, you can reverse now. All right, so Kehart can reverse now, but he'll be for forced out his first ring escape. So one ring escape per superstar. One of the manuals, they each allowed three manuals. Oh, the referee! Casualty, he had his target stuck on the ref and convicted takes advantage. That's that EIF stalling rule that Kehart violated. Helocity champion not in a good position now. Referee is down, but neither look to go to the outside for any weaponry. Coming up later on, we have the United States title on the line, blah, blah, on Deadly Gamer. And neither superstar is going to be able to look for weaponry there. They're going to be trapped inside a steel cage that's coming up tonight. And I thought Kehart was thinking signature. Yes, he does. Stall time is clean on that one. He hits the signature. He doesn't have the stamina to hit that finisher. That would be too long of a stall if he did it now. Free move. Ah, and that's going to be a free signature. That's going to be a free signature. Kehart, you have to let go. K K I, and I understand that, but did you see what you did? Then you stomped him and did it. So you're, what you're doing is, what you're doing is you're, you're waiting. You have four seconds that you can stall on the I have. So it goes like one, two, three, four. Like four fast seconds, okay? Um, if, if you can't get your move off in that time, then you, and, and when you walk back and forth, you can reverse, by the way. But when you walk back and forth, um, that's where, you know, that's considered twitching. That's not allowed. And it's actually on the rules, so you can see that. So, by the way, um, so Kehart, uh, since Convicted did not get to hit a finisher on you, your finisher is not counting towards the finisher count. So it is still a 0-0 zero, zero finisher count. James, please make sure that you have that correct. So, anyway, Convicted. You, and, and that's true. Even, even if he is the Hellocity champion, you can be prone to making mistakes. Kehart. Uh, a little unfortunate, though, he's making some really big ones, and uh, or at least that one was, and Convicted is getting all the opportunities to capitalize here. And the match is going to be called both ways, so this is not the New England Patriots game. Convicted with an Irish whip, sends the champion off the ropes, and oh, what the hell is this? Oh, nice, Valley to Valley! But Convicted struggled in that stamina. Now he has the stamina. Oh, Convicted... We could see a title change. We could see a title change right here, guys. Oh, great right hand by Kehart. Champion trying to keep it intact. And you know he's going to go for that submission. Yes, Neville has the red arrow, but Kehart has been tapping people out left and right. He's a, a model after NBC, and he gets powerbomb. But Convicted looking to combat the submission. Right hand over the head. Convicted goes for the finisher. Kehart's on. Pushes him out of the way. Smart move there. Goes for the signature. Convicted has it right back. They play bumper cars. What nice Hurricane Rana. Nice little moves here. And yes, uh, K Hart had a couple of rule boxes, but I think aside from that, this has been a good match. Although now it's showing me my mic icon isn't moving. There we go. Okay, I must have been connecting for a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll make a new party at the end of this. So, anyway, what I was saying, hopefully the, the streams are moving through. In party listeners, guys, I think I think if you block out K Hart's couple of move breaks, you know, we got greedy, we got jumper in here, we got tripod in here. It's been, it's been a good match. And convicted. Nice little spin. Greedy has no idea he's not even watching a goddamn match. And now, Enziguri from K Hart. Tyron with laughter in the party. Convicted with a clothesline. Uh, there's a finisher in hand, and now rolling out second ring escape is K Hart. DZ, are you good to go then? DZ, are you good? Are you going to be good to go? Okay, cool. Anyway, DDT, I heard him say it, right? No, I'm just kidding. Nobody did. Fucking asshole. Anyway, K Hart with a signature in hand. Clean stall. That's a clean stall. It was not over the time limit, so he's good there. They are with a clean signature and a clean finisher attempt completely stopped by Convicted. 
Stomp on the chest. Convicted adds a finisher. But Convicted's closing in. He might have a signature and a finisher coming up here. Uh-oh, KR down to one reversal. So is Convicted, and Crucifix connects to the champion. I just think Kaler's resiliency in the IF hasn't been tested a lot. Nice work, Kamala. But Convicted seemed very prepared for this matchup, and he will use a second ring escape. Both superstars have used two ring escapes. Back suplex connects. Challenger now put toward the center of the ring. Kehart intelligent ring IQ there, and awareness. Stopped with the right hand on the the back pedal, and he got him. Nice float over DT. He's done it so much, and Convicted was never able to capitalize there. And there's been several times I think Convicted would have had the chance. It's hit with a nice European uppercut. We're connecting again on the party, so hope you are listening live on Mixer or Twitch. Twitch is a bit more of a delay, but you're getting the audio through there. Or at least you should be. You definitely are on Mixer. I can promise you that. Bet my bottom dollar. We're going to fix these party issues. We're having a lot of them right now, so sorry about that. Rather party than in-game, I guess, right? They are picking up Convicted. As an on the shoulders and convict. Oh, he just got mid-moved. KR just got mid-moved. KR just got mid-moved. Olympic slam! I really hope that's on Jason Jordan's move set. One, two. And that would be a new champion, am I correct? Is the Olympic slam on Jason Jordan's move set though? It is default. Or are you just guessing? All right, if you're rolling your fire, don't forget it. Either way, we have a, well, apparently it's good. Everybody's saying it's good. Convicted is the new EIF Velocity Champion. And how about that? Because, of course, it happens outside of the party. But uh, K-Hart had done that float over DDT to Convicted so many times in the match. That would be six times. The pinpoint time, the reversal scheme, whatever it was, to get that mid move. He finally gets a mid move, and that's a pass on the finisher. We mentioned Kehart's resiliency was not tested, but he's not very resilient. Convicted gets the one, two, three, and we're not even live on the pay per view portion of our show tonight. And already a title has changed hands. What could this mean for the three titles that will be on the line, plus the Rumble, plus all much more? Man, this is going to be a fun night and a very entertaining match from the guys from Hellocity. Convicted, congratulations on becoming the new EIF Hellocity champion. K Hart will be entitled to a rematch clause, and we can't wait to see these guys duke it out again because that was a good one and a good way to set the tone for what will be coming up in just a few minutes. It's the live pay-per-view event action, EIF's 8th Annual Ultimate Destiny. And we are going to have entrances for that pay-per-view too, expected to happen throughout the night. So the U.S. title, the Superstar title, the World title, and the 2018 EIF Royal Rumble, the Hall of Fame induction announcement, so much more. Can't wait. Give us a quick few minutes here. We're going to get this party set up and fix some things and then when we come back ladies and gentlemen it will be time for the pay-per-view event EIF's eighth annual ultimate destiny so until then thanks for tuning in to the EIF pre-show we'll be back at the top of the hour for EIF ultimate destiny live on pay-per-view the road to wrestlemania continues in just a few minutes